So the main house from Corvo Bianco Vineyard from The Witcher 3. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome back to another video. It has been quite a long time uh, since my last post. I have been working on this model for months, actually a little over four months actually. Uh, oh, the first month I was planning it out, figuring out the sizes of everything. <laughs> what was it, like three months later, uh, I finally finished the model. I, I don't have a lot of tools, you know, so I, I'm sort of, this is probably the biggest, uh, most elaborate thing I've ever made. Uh, this is only like the fifth model I've ever made in my life. So uh, it, uh, I'm still kind of learning the ropes as, as through a lot of this. Uh, so uh, I had a couple challenges. The first challenge was really just making sure that the scale was right. I ended up doing uh, sort of a 160 scale uh, model here. So I ended up coming up with this one. I made it to scale so I can actually measure off of it. Anyway, so, um, okay, so with this I already have the templates already created and uh, pretty much I'm just kind of putting it all together. As I say, the first time I tried this, it was uh, using three quarter inch foam, or actually three sixteenths inch foam actually on top of chipboard. And well, I was trying to make it, you know, where you can have the inside and the outside and that just wasn't working out very well at all. Um, I had some, some, some grand plans, but anyway, um, in this case, I just went through with the measurements and made sure that, um, you know, I got everything as cut up as I could. And then I had to compensate for the roof pitch and a few other things that are going on there. So I hate, um, hot glue. I really do. I really hate it. And so, but I didn't have a choice. I wanted to get through this pretty quickly and get it all together. And hot glue is unfortunately the only thing that can just get it done that quickly. I guess super glue maybe, but no thank you. So um, I also found that instead of those uh, foam pens, um, most of the time now I use masking tape to make sure that I can seal those uh, seams together and I don't have to really worry about it, um, you know, <laughs> just falling apart on me as I'm trying. I'm in the middle of trying to get it all glued together. So you'll see here in just a second that I, yeah, see I'm piecing it together because I didn't measure it correctly when I first started. I'm not really quite sure why. I just figured that um, whatever it was, <laughs> I had just uh, I just didn't calculate it correctly. So there are a couple little things in here that you're gonna see added to it a little bit later. And that is the fact that I do not have a roof pitch support in the center there. Um, it, it happens. So the reason I did that bottom um, was because I had and intended for this model to just be this. But as I was going through, I ended up adding a base and everything, which made that kind of kind of pointless. Uh, but it did, I think, just reinforce the thing so I could move it around and twist it and not have to worry about it um, kind of um, caving in on me, you know, in, in the slightest bit. Uh, but this is, as I say, this is like three quarter inch foam, so the stuff's not going to go anywhere anyway, especially after all that hot glue. Um, let's see, what else is there? Okay, this is me taking off the tape at this point. So I have a lot of seams because I'm just not very good at cutting stuff yet. I don't know what it is. I constantly mess it up. I don't know what I was talking about with the tape there for so long. Good Lord. So, um, oh, this is the two ply chipboard. I was going to decide to do that to make sure that it was going to work out right. Uh, not cave in on me. So this is uh, that normal vinyl, no shrink patch, which means no water. So I'm just going through and trying to get all of that, uh, all the basic stuff uh, patched up and then sanded. So this is me trying to eventually uh, mark all of the brickwork. Because the thing about this model is that uh, you can see the brickwork because the plaster that's over top of it is kind of cracking and folding and, and breaking off. So... I have to go through and then cut all of the lines, or you know, not cut them, but um, measure, and then go back with this pencil, this number two pencil, and then draw the lines over to create it. So here it is, right here. This is one of the reasons why I like this no shrink um, patch. Mm. Excuse me, is because basically, it even when it dries, it's not really hard. So you can go right back over and 
and put these lines and whatnot in there and you don't have to worry about it it's actually pretty easy for the most part now see there's that little square that i put on the uh, the roof to help support or on that one wall to help support the roof whenever i get to it so um these are relatively deep lines and so this way i can actually play around with uh, this patch that i'm putting over the whole thing Again, putting this patch on, it's a little tedious step, and maybe there's a couple ways around it, you know, just not drawing the line so deep. But I really want to get that look, and on top of that, this patch will just kind of help with the overall protection of the foam. You know, it's just one of those things that you go through. But I think I went over this three or four different times, just um, patching it, sanding it, um, sort of adding some texture to it here and there, and then going back and <laughs> rubbing it off. Um, I don't know. It's it's kind of hard to find in the game where where this the, the details are exactly this um, you know visible every every time of the day with the lighting engine. It's it's going to look a little different. So you just do the best you can and um, and go from there. Let's see. I'm not really I'm not really quite sure why I hang on this so long. <laughs> Um, but yeah, just doing everything you possibly can to actually kind of make sure that the stuff uh, will look right in the end. And unfortunately, you just never really know. The only problem with that vinyl patch stuff is that um, it doesn't stick the foam very well right off the bat. So you have to really kind of finagle it on. Um, this is just me putting black paint on the inside of all of the, the interior. So because all that pink foam was actually shining. I figured even with the roofs being on there, it was still going to be um, visible. And I didn't want you to really look in the window and see the Pink Panther. Uh, this is just uh, my first of probably three or four coats of paint, me trying to decide what color I really wanted. Um, uh, you're going to see me kind of skip this section over here, this top part here. I recommend never doing that, even if you think that this area is going to be covered um, you're going to find out that there's going to be a little piece of section that kind of sneaks out and peeks out from behind some detail and then you are stuck trying to cover up this pink foam stuff because I had this happen. So whenever you do this, just make sure that you actually cover everything on the surface, even if you do intend on actually covering it up later with something else. Uh, let's see. So this is that sort of ledge that happens here. I think I ended up making this a little bit larger than the actual scale is on the, the 3D in, in the game. Um, and I don't have anything to really make this out of except actually carving balsa wood. So I ended up having to get like a 3 16 by 3 16 cutting this sort of weird angle on it and trimming it down a little bit and uh, causing some you know like some little rubs here and there it looks like the the concrete had fallen apart and then I had to get some smaller ones and then put underneath of it I think I'll, I'll zoom in on it later here but I think anyway um, but I had to it's three different pieces of wood uh, that I had to cut at 45 degree angles no yeah 45 degree angles on the side so I can seam all this stuff together I got pretty lucky because I did some basic measurements um, but it didn't work out. It worked out for the most part, but it was a little off. So miraculously, I, I don't know what happened to the video, but uh, I went back through and put all of the little um, buttresses. I guess you can call them buttresses. They're not very big, but but that's pretty much what they are, wall supports. So I put all those on there, and this thing up here in the front, I noticed that it kind of angled off and it looked a little bit bigger. Oddly enough, it looks a lot bigger on the model than it does in the game. But when I went back and looked at the game, uh, a lot of the stuff is hidden by trees and vines and stuff. And so inevitably, I think that I'm pretty close on scale. I might be a little bit larger, but I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. Um, let's see. Oh, yes. I am putting these wedges on the, uh, the, uh, the sides because last minute realization, I did see that one of the sides or both the sides, I don't know, but this side has the walls that come out a little bit more of a tapered angle. So then I just had to get some small foam and then cut it up and inside it here. The reason I didn't go with the other way on the other side is that I'm not good at cutting foam. So I had to make them shorter so I can get the angles exact. 
So then this way I can do it. And it happens on both sides. And I think it's probably on both sides of the model from left and the right. But since the left side of the house, which is technically on the right side right now, but the left side of the house is underground, basically. So you probably just don't see it at all. Um, I figured I'd only put it on this side because the other side has that um, that retaining wall. So this is me doing windows again. I'm, I'm happy with the way most of them turned out. But honestly, I can't wait till I get like a resin printer or something because I'm going to make windows from now on one piece 3D or something if I can. This Each window has probably somewhere between 14 15 components each you know and we're talking like right now this little chipboard piece that I'm working with is probably I don't know it's one ply and it's probably I think it's uh, maybe about a 16th of an inch tall it's ridiculously small and then the pieces on the inside get even smaller than that those little window slats and everything it's just it's just insane my fingers are just way too big to be really dealing with this kind of detail and there's a lot of frustration simply because it's just it's so small. Look at this. I mean, it's, it's like a giant dealing with, it's ridiculous. So I end up, you know, I, I do this anyway. I get the ledges on here. Uh, I did, the problem with one ply chipboard is that it's thin. And when you start putting like little details on a ledge, I ended up bending a lot of them and trying to reform them with some glue and some other things like that. So it can become uh, problematic. But unfortunately, I had to use one ply because of the scale. The two ply just looked too big. It looked like it would have like a, a ledge that was probably somewhere around eight inches thick, which just didn't make any sense. So I'll go through and, um, and try my best at this whole process. Uh, again, like this is real time right now. So this is kind of give you an idea as to how long it took to do each window. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine, like, I don't know, 16, 17 windows, I think. Yeah. So it's, it's, I had to, I had to spread it out over uh, the couple of months because they were really cramping the hands. Um, and, but I didn't ever, I never had any problem with them. You know what I mean? I'm like, uh, they all pretty much looked the same, even though that um, I did every one of them by hand. Um, this, so this is when uh, this little bottom piece here. Now, technically, the the stuff that's chipboard is the stuff that represents stone. Um, and then I do all the wood after everything has actually got uh, good and dry. And I do that because I'm going to paint the wood different colors and stuff like that. I just didn't want to get everything in the way. You know, now that I think about this, it probably would have been a pretty good idea just to go ahead and just do it all at the same time. But I'm kind of happy I did it this way because it gave me an opportunity to sort of stay away from the windows as long as I could. Um, see, I think I got all of it in here. Yeah, so I have all of the windows from the front and the back, obviously, except for the main house, the main section, I should say. Okay, so this is... Uh, the left side of the, the of the house so I had to put this sort of um, I guess framework on this stuff so this way it would actually sit um, had I been thinking about it because I didn't really see this ahead of time but the thing is is that um, well let's see how's the, how's the best way to put this there are multiple layers of the wood on this stuff um, you know, as far as the 3D model is concerned. And I didn't want to have to go through trying to kind of come up with all these sub layers and things like that. So that's the reason I, I made this sort of framework because this is the frame that you can see. And I didn't really want to go any further than that. And then I added what I needed to to make it work and, and what it looked right. Um, I wanted to go ahead and include all of this sort of in this time lapse kind of situation because I wanted to just see what kind of what I had to go through and, and what it had to look like. Uh, now that little bitty detail on the piece of wood here at the very top, after I got everything on there, you could barely see it, but, um, uh, I don't regret putting it on there because at the end of the day, it was accurate to the model. And if you look close enough on the finished model, you will be able to see it. It's just uh, kind of tucked up under the roof. So let's see, uh, this took a while. Um, 
honestly not anywhere near as long as I thought it would because at one point I, I kept the the this sort of uh, image beside me to kind of look at so I wanted to try to get it as close as possible with like some of the some of the horizontal pieces of wood there I wanted to make sure it looked as close as like just looking at it right off the top um, to the com uh, to the CG model but otherwise it's not a hundred percent accurate so obviously I already jumped cut to this thing and, and I've already primed the um, the the side of the house with that um, sort of I think a medium gray kind of situation okay and I uh, prime all of this black because of the weathered wood I wanted to have that sort of undertone this is regular black paint flat black paint and so I use two or three different colors um, to um, paint this section up in here actually almost all the wood I kind of do a a chocolate brown and then I go back and do like a light mocha and a couple different things like that um, uh, varying scales I think I used khaki at one point too just to kind of offset some of the color and then um, then I went back with black towards the the bottom just to kind of create that weathered look but you know all of the and this is pretty much dry brushed on there and I sort of went kind of against the grain you know after I had already uh, all the wood, I guess I should probably mention this, all the wood that I put on, I texture it first. Uh, I really sort of rip it apart, you know, the wood is balsa, so it's pretty easy to do with this little brush. So I do all that texturing, and then that's when I, when it's all glued up there and it's nice and solid, then I feel comfortable going back through and doing a paint job on it. Um, I don't seal these things before I paint them. I just sort of paint them with the prime, so it's the black soaked it up big time. So now here it is, I'm going through and and creating this sort of highlight to the main color. Um, I'm doing this because I'm really trying to, to to really practice with my paints and build up these colors. I figure um, if I get a, an opportunity to sort of paint on the sort of larger scale that when it really comes down to doing a lot more of the minis later on that I'm really going to be able to get uh, an idea and a handle on sort of the values and things like that um, with the different colors what they can provide now a lot of the stuff here is uh, as far as the modeling is concerned uh, the original model is supposed to have all the gaps there are supposed to be holes through the <laughs> through the roof itself or whatever you want to call this section uh, I, I was not going to do that I, I, I was afraid of the creating instability in the in the the section and then the front of part of the house itself or whatever actually it's the front and the back um, so I just opted to make him uh, a little thicker have a little bit more depth to them and keep all that inside black so that way it just looks you know when the roof gets on there it just looks like it's 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 a hole going through it or something so as I say, uh, this is probably the um, I think it's called territorial beige. Um, all of the paint right now so far that I've been using is just uh, like a little cheap apple barrel stuff. Uh, it's all pretty simple for the most part. Um, yeah, I don't think I actually used any fancy colors, uh, fa fancy paints on this. It's just all been the model paint you get from Walmart or wherever you want to get it from. Because um, it's like 50 cents a piece, whereas if you go to San uh, like Michael's or something, it's, it's about a dollar or dollar fifty a piece for the same paint so okay so I'm kinda I go through many different layers here I, I really do I go through I say I use three or four different color paints and I use them sort of over top of each other quite a few times now the video I feel like the video is is maybe making these a little brighter looking than it's actually is in real life so uh, because you know, if you, if you look at the photo from the thumbnail from the video, it's 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 much darker. It's much darker. So even though you can't really see this here for this side, I think I use about two or three different color grays. I have a bunch of different variations uh, in it because I figured that once this sort of half painted white paint goes on um, to make it look worn and, and you know and weathered, that I wanted to be able to have some. Um, you know, because I put this stuff on light, so basically I wanted it to keep the values that I had created underneath of it, and for the most part, it worked pretty well. I think the paint's just kind of thick. It would have probably worked a lot better had I used like a translucent white, as opposed to just regular white. But Apple Barrel doesn't sell translucent white. 
Okay, so now I'm working with the roof. Uh, this is a little overblown, so sorry. Um, so in this point, I'm actually, you know, measure two, three times, you know, cut once and then go back and remeasure because I cut it wrong the first time. Um, but make sure you get this right because there's no turning back. Now this is two ply. And the reason that it's two ply is because after I paint this here, it is going to represent the section of wood that is supposed to be the under belly of the whole thing in the first place. And because the roof is, you know, is very hodgepodge, is hodgepodge the best word? I don't know. Um, it's, it's all over the place, right? It's broken up. It's, it's damaged. And I didn't want to run the risk of potentially having some chipboard exposed. So better to be safe than sorry. And I knew it wouldn't go past like an inch, no matter what. Uh, incidentally, it did go past an inch, so uh, I just it was just bad luck. Most of the time it probably shouldn't, but I just cut a piece off here a little bit too much. So anyway, I measured, now this is that plastic sheeting. Um, it already comes in this color of terracotta color, but it's very, very glossy and nothing sticks to it. Everything comes off of it, even glue. So I had to buy some, um, I think, army paint, uh, black primer, matte uh, black primer and spray it down on both sides and then go back with some terracotta color and then which is why you get the sort of splotchy black i kind of like that it actually added another weathered look just by uh, the terracotta paint bleeding through so that's why i did what i did here um and i used uh, I, I didn't know what was going to stick so i ended up using um a combination of hot glue and st uh, tacky glue just to be able to get it on uh solid this is me going back and just um repainting it again because again it, it's this just a little too much black showing through and i was a little worried that uh, once i got everything on there it wouldn't look like terracotta anymore so i had i thought about this ahead of time i should have painted the underbelly of the thing which was still black beforehand so I just went back in and touched in the edges a little bit and just once. And so it just kind of created its own shadow because it was mostly, you know, black bleeding through from the terracotta color. So in this case, I'm just using, I think, like a medium gray again. And I'm dry brushing it a lot just in certain sections. And this is to kind of create this idea of uh, the uh, water damage from all of this old wood and it's just sort of bleeding down the roof. Eventually, I'm going to go back, like right here, and um, I'm going to use a little bit of uh, terracotta and then go back over and dry brush it uh, left and right, stuff, stuff like that. It's just to kind of tone it down a little bit, make it blend in a little bit better. So I, now this is, I'm actually using a much, much lighter color because there's all those different little spots. Here we go, uh, little spots of different color terracotta clays. So... I do that and I do the same thing and I sort of brush it down a little bit and kind of buff it down. So here is the kitchen finally. Um, the kitchen is 100% wood uh, except for that little section down at the bottom which was um, stone. I tried my best to keep everything as close to what the wood pattern looked like. So this is why I had the tablet out just as a, as a reference point. Um, so I realized I was getting tired of cutting around the window. So I decided, because it was balsa, it was easier just to cut the windows out later. And it was. It was much easier. So and now I'm going back. I had to create a baseline for the stuff at the top. So in this way, it had something to wear. Because all of this, uh, the vertical wood here on this side, on the peak, it, it was all over the place. So I just had to make sure. I couldn't do like the other side, just do a few. I had to do the whole thing. Um... You know, and I obviously I didn't texture those because you're probably actually I don't think you see any of it at all except for maybe this that little piece underneath of the window. But other than that, it's all pretty self-explanatory for the most part. But I did everything I could to just sort of factory assembly the stuff as fast as I possibly could because I think at this point I'm already I'm 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 well past the two month mark. I think I'm into the three month mark actually. Or just touching, just touching into the three month mark. Um, and so, okay, so I have all the wood. Obviously, I don't have the, the stuff yet. And I have, and I had to kind of carve these thicker pieces of balsa down to kind of create that little, you know, um, angle. Because it's the one that you actually see in, in, you know, completely. 
And I was going to do that for all of them, but that just ended up being a lot more work. And I didn't really, I didn't want to spend any more time than I had to on it. So I decided that it was better just to cut off little pieces, cut an angle in the foam, and then just seat this balsa. There we go, right there. Seat that balsa in some glue. And by just turning it down a little bit, it was enough to give the illusion that it was sort of curling up a little bit. It was perfectly fine. Um, so then I had to put the, um, the rafters in. Because this roof slants just a little bit, or it curves, it has the most curve of all the roofs are supposed to have anyway. Um, this is why I did all of these independently. Now this was, I, it worked out, but <laughs> I didn't know if this was going to work out. I literally glued... I love tacky glue. I glued the end of this balsa wood directly to the wood and just had it sitting down on the rest of the foam. I'm really shocked that it worked. Uh, I thought it was going to fall down. Now, in this case, I I don't know what my genius mind was thinking when I put them up there without texturing and then I put the wall, the roof and everything up, but I inevitably had to go back and retexture. And then and this is the same thing as the other one up at the top. It, the, I just had to prime it all with a really, really thick uh, black paint. So, and then the rafters, because they look really, really weathered, I went ahead and just primed those with like, I think, I think this is called pewter gray. It ends up being like, I think, number five value gray. But ultimately, I think uh, Apple Barrel calls it pewter. So, I don't know why, because it's not metallic at all. But, okay, so I do the same thing. I'm using all pretty much the same colors. Uh, chocolate brown, burnt sienna. Um, what's, what else the, uh, the, the, I keep wanting to say continental, but it's that, uh, territorial beige. Yeah, that's it. So, um, this stuff, these little shingles are one thirty second inch thick. They're very, very tiny. They're probably, probably the thickness of my fingernail. Um, I had to use them because anything else looked wrong. Uh, they wouldn't lay correctly. So I had to go back and do all this because, again, you know, you spend all this money in the game to modify and, and, and rebuild the house, but it still has a bunch of holes in it. Um, you know, I, yeah, it looks cool, but you know, ugh, it's a pain in the butt. <laughs> so inevitably, I actually liked the way it looked. I had to kind of uh, break script, you know, from the way it looked in the, in the game because some of the stuff I just I couldn't get it exactly right. So I do say I do the same thing. I, I paint this uh, base coat with um, pewter gray. And inevitably I'm going to do some variations of a couple different browns that I use, but mostly a lighter colors and go back and do this because the, the roof itself is actually pretty. Here's this. It says say it's mostly lighter beige, light beige and a little bit of uh, chocolate brown at, you know, over top. There we go. Chocolate brown. So this is just that same standard um, patch. I thought I had this great idea to put some sand and stuff in it and, and really make it work, but um, it didn't. It was useless. By the time all the texture was done, it just it just blended in together. So just use regular stuff. It doesn't matter. Here I am uh, throwing some highlights on the roof now. A lot of this stuff is like five, six minutes apart from each other, so the stuff's not dry yet. The reason I put the aluminum foil is uh, to make sure, because the <laughs> patch was starting to fall off the the house a little bit and stick to this wooden base that I had, you know, the tabletop. So, um, all of this stuff is still drying. So I decided to go ahead and cut up a bunch of tiny little tiles to put on all of the buttresses, all the support wall supports. Um, I don't know why this isn't the, um, the Spanish tile that's on the roof because it makes more sense because the rest of the vineyard is the same way. But for whatever reason, this is that uh, broken down, you know, disgusting uh, uh, weathered thing. So, you know, so it, it is what it is, the shingles. Um, had I been smart, I would have actually added the color to this before I put it on the thing. And this way it would have prevented me from having to paint it or at least the base coat. But uh, live and learn, do it next time. Uh, and here I am doing the primary uh, primer for this, the base stuff, because again, it's pretty much going to be that weathered wood. Um, very little of it actually even looks brown. It's almost all gray for the most part. 
So um, I opted to do the windows for the kitchen second, uh, or last, I should say, as opposed to all the other windows that I did. Um, I did have footage for the windows right there in the, in the main house, but I, uh, I, I lost them, or I'm just, I just try to cut it out for the sake of the video. So I did this side right here, brown, and then realized when I went back in the game for some reference that they had tried to do the same thing as the other side. So it was a sort of painted white. So I had to go and kind of go back and redo that a little bit. So I have a, a full size base here for three quarter inch foam because I had to put this new stuff here in the front, this shed thing, whatever you want to call it. I had to put that in the in, in something. So I ended up having to do this bigger base. I didn't know what I was going to do. I didn't know if I was going to cut it down or if I was going to leave it. Uh, I, I didn't. I had no idea because I'm already running uh, way behind in time. So, uh, so I make this the best I possibly can with the wood that I have here um, using the supports. I think I make that little center post a little too short, but it is what it is. Because when you, when I finally get the fences up, the fences kind of look like like miniature versions of the mini thing it's, it's kind of small it's like an ankle fence so um here is an overblown shot of me cutting all of the um, i don't know why it's overblown too but here's a shot of me kind of i think i have more lights on so yeah i'm i'm putting these little shingles now I, I use this really really thin piece of balsa wood as just a sort of a a cheat so i didn't have to do the rafters because you can't really see the rafters because you can't really look uh, because of the camera in the game you can't really look up in there too well so i figured you know who cares I, I have to i have to cut some time out so i'm really going through this and because of this i soak this in mod podge i just soak it it's completely like it was dripping off of it because well there you go i'm just pouring it on uh it's because it's i wanted to i wanted to make sure it soaked up into all that wood and just sort of <laughs> stuff that wouldn't flake off at all um i didn't think about it and i didn't patch i didn't paint the base first uh, so i had to kind of go back the problem is i'd like to say that i learned my lesson but i didn't because when i went back to do the other side i did the exact same thing i built the stuff before i actually primed that pink foam uh, it is what it is um, just have a decent brush and I guess you can sneak around some of that stuff. So this is the pieces of like the two by four that are in the wood. So I had painted this with and added a little bit of really fine sand to kind of create like some, I don't know what it was. It didn't turn out very well. I should have just left it the way it was, but it added a little bit of texture to the ground. So that was fine, I guess. But I did Mod Podge on it as well because it was kind of popping up because that sand or whatever just wasn't letting it adhere to the ground so here it is um with that mod podge it always creates that sh sort of shellac so paint doesn't stick to it on the first coat so it or it barely sticks to it on the first coat um i thought that was something that I, that would be useful and uh, i inevitably go back and paint the thing like three or four more times with all the different colors and all the different you know highlights and shadows so this is me i don't i don't know uh, I guess I just like the way the, the wood feels after it's been modge podged because I sealed all this stuff up and then realized I had to go back and repaint some of it. So um, I think that's what I was talking about in the video, but I don't know. So here I am. See what this, I mean, look at my fingers. My hand is the whole kitchen. I mean, that's just insane. And I'm trying to get these little bitty pieces in here. I think inevitably, as I, now if I'm just thinking about this now, I think I forgot to go back and put... The shutters on those on that one window there, that double window. I think I forgot to. Oh well. So um, here is me trying to figure out what color I want the ground to be. Um, I think I'm using like a wash. This is the first wash that I use in the whole house. Incidentally, it's the last wash I use in the house because it didn't actually do what I wanted it to do in the first place. So I um, I just wanted to really make it muddy. And I think it would have probably been a lot easier for me if I just got some mud texture paint. But I'm already, I was already quite, you know, that 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 tile work for the for the roof really set me back for two pieces. It was like 15, 16 bucks, and I had to buy two packs. And uh, so I guess it's not too bad. But uh, you know, when everything else was basically the like cost three dollars total, <laughs> the uh, the the roof made it more expensive. So. The reason I'm doing, I'm looking at this foam over here on this side is because 
um, I'm realizing that um, that I'm I'm gonna have to build it up uh, because the post that's gonna go over here in the other one is actually set in the the, the porch concrete. So uh, and it looked empty on the side. Now I'm way overdue for this thing. I needed to get it done and out, but it just didn't look right for the house not having that sort of wraparound porch. So I had to compromise, build it up. Now that's, I just used two layers of 316 inch foam, you know, pull off the paper and then just kind of glued that down. Um, you can see that little step frame sitting over there in the very top middle of the front uh, of the, of my frame here. So that's over there drying because it's such a weird angle. So here are the pieces of wood that I've done for the posts and for this other thing that is going to basically hold itself up. I was dreading this forever. I ended up just getting some little pieces of string and wrapping them around the top and then gluing gluing it, just dipping it in glue because it, it, it would, it, there's no way to tie it down. Hmm, excuse me. So, uh, which worked, and it has yet to fray off yet, but... I kind of go through this very quickly. Um, as I was going to say, I love tacky glue because the stuff works really well. It just takes a while to dry. But uh, but yeah, I go through and then realize that I'm going to have to pin a support down because I tried this two or three different times. And there's that support. I tried two or three different times just to glue it and hold it. And then that was just the dumbest thing I'd ever tried before. Now, you have to understand, there's like one drop of glue from holding it to the wall and then holding it to the post. There's, so there's two drops on each one, and somehow this stuff holds up. Eventually, as I say, it dries, and then I put two more up so I can because it's going to go underneath of it. And then I realized the other support that I made is actually too small, and it's too late to try to get back in there and unpin it. So I just have to raise it up a little bit and, and kind of keep it from falling. So anyway, as I say, I primed that little stair front there. I have, still have to add some steps, but that's my framework there. I don't know why I decided that this is what I needed to do, but I was like, hey, I know, the wall needs some mud splash on it, so let's do that. Uh, there's just so many other things I have to do, but you know what? It needs some mud splash. Well, you know, mud splash it is. So uh, I still had a bunch of wood left over from that uh, 132nd and stuff, so I just kind of cut them into little planks, and then measured out exactly where the planks were supposed to start in the first place. And then once I figured this out and got it going, I just sort of started gluing the way. Um, but, let's see, it's kind of a little overblown. But, um, but yeah, so I, I'm doing this. And, uh, uh, and because they're so thin, <laughs> they're so thin, they started curling up immediately. So I had to, I had to postpone doing any more of it. And then weighting it down so this way it would stop curling. Um, just me trying to hide the paint brand uh, for the weights. <laughs> uh, so I figure since I have to wait for all that, I might as well go ahead and cut all this stuff up. And boom, there it is. You know, I've already. And this is so short that these didn't curl up. It was just the really long ones on that foam for whatever reason. So, okay, so there is the base there. And now, I think in the game, I feel like in the game that this was upside down, you know, by accident or something. Because it feels like this, these pieces are the things that actually hold the wood, you know, like you would nail to as opposed to nailing on top of. I don't know. But whatever the case is, is that it's in the game that way. So this is the way it gets made. So... I go through and I get all this. Now, at the very back there, I, they're a little bit too large. I, I cut them down once it finally dries. So this is the door, finally. I had to get a larger piece of balsa and chop this stuff down and make it to where it looks like it has a little bit of a curve. Um, by the end of the... By the, wow, by the time I'm done, it doesn't look as curvy as it does in the game, but that's okay. So I make it thicker, so this way I use that really thin wood to create the, the door itself. So this way, you know, I still have that ledge for where the, the door frame is supposed to be built. So in this case, I just use uh, most of the stuff is the same color for the thing. So it's just uh, chocolate brown. You know, I don't try to change it. Now, you'll see these big blocks over there sitting there drying uh, these H's or whatever. Um, that is my first attempt at the steeple. And I ended up 
it was way too big. I don't know what I was thinking when I was doing it. I think, you know, because most of the stuff is, is really dragging on and I'm spending two and three o'clock in the morning trying to get the stuff done while I'm working, you know, full time job. So it's like, um, cause I'm just like, I need to get this done. I need to get this done. Uh, so there's all the little detail work that I'm doing for the door. Um, I think I finally trim up the door in the bottom. I just don't paint it cause it's going to be covered up because clearly I haven't found out that the steeple is not going to work. So it's just, um, it's all part of that. So here I have glued and waiting for that. So I decide that this sort of puffy, uh, glue, uh, no, it's puffy paint for, for fabric. I use it. Cause it has a really, really fine head on it. So you can squeeze out little bitty drops. And I figured I'd do this little puffy thing for the, for the, um, for all the hardware for the door, including the handle. Cause those jewelry handles, they're cool. Um, but it's not appropriate scale. So I wanted to keep it all relatively decent scale. So this is the steeple. Now that I've gone back and redone the size, uh, I didn't actually have a, a size comparison, but, um, so I have to, <laughs> So I'm trying to glue all these little frames here and somehow or another, because I have to use super glue because it's just so small. I ha I have um I have glued it to the table. <laughs> I have glued it and uh I, the nice thing is the damage that I created actually worked well for the damage to the to the, the to them themselves. So so there it is over glued to the side and I'm just painting the 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 puffy f fabric paint. Um black so that way it's the features for the for the wrought iron hardware inevitably that uh, that steeple it uh, it dries crooked <laughs> so i have to deal with that in a minute too so um there's the wooden base i'm not even sure that that's actually accurate to the game but for whatever reason i guess i just didn't make this door thick enough or i cut it too far back or i'm not quite sure so i just sort of compensated and put some put a wooden base down and that was that so here's where I am doing that concrete stuff. But in this case, I just uh, realized that it would be so much easier to put the paint into it, mix it up, and then apply it, which is what I did. And uh, for the finished product, I didn't actually do any texturing to it or anything like that at all. Now, this is the, I'm getting this ready for the post, the fence posts, but I'm never able to actually finish those fence posts. Uh, it was just so much time and I had to get this stuff done. I just had to get it done. And I really wanted to do them, but there, there's a lot of detail work in these little bitty posts. And I'm running it like a quarter of an inch thick. I, I just couldn't figure out how to do them and make them look good and get it ready for uh, any kind of time frame. So I just, had to, I just had to skip them. I do want to go back and get them though at one point. So this is just pewter gray and some white. Um, over top of it just a little bit coming from top to bottom so that way it kind of gives this um, almost like bird crap more than it was painted white in the first place <laughs> so I cut out this little piece I wanted to make sure this was made first and then cut it out of the roof because I did not want to even see what was going to happen if I would cut the roof out and made it too big so I just went and I I made the roof cut to whatever it ended up with with this little steeple, which incidentally, as I say, this is where I find that it's um it's a little lop, so I have to decide which side looks best from the front, and then I hot glue it down a lot, and so this is just a little strip of the same material that I had already made before, and then just and I just hot glued it down. Boom, that was pretty simple. Okay, so. What this is going to be is just me working with the roof a little bit. Um, I decided I had to do some sort of landscaping here in a second. I'm just talking about the steeple, so we'll move past this. But uh, I just do um, a little bit of landscaping at this point. I did not record most of this, but I did do the stuff for the roof. That's going to be right here. I apply the glue, and then I sprinkled some regular green foam on it, and then went from there. And then uh, that was that. I just said it had to be done. Full disclosure, there are things in this model that I had to take personal liberties with, okay? There's just no way around it. Uh, first off, probably many people may have noticed this, but it is the curved roof, number one. First and foremost, the curved roof. So, yes, the roof pitches do not curve, um, but I think that they do a pretty decent job on their own for what they are. 
Um, overall, though, I say I'm, I'm pretty happy. Please tell me what you think. Um, if you like it, uh, don't like it, whatever. Tell me what you think. As a bonus, I am going to include, for free, I am going to include my layout designs. Um, but anyway, um, I say I hope you really, really enjoyed this. Um, please check me out on Patreon. Uh, and please also, I say, share, like, do everything with this on here on YouTube. And um, until next time, keep building. Thanks. Bye. Okay, so real quick, here's my turnaround. So I want to apologize ahead of time. I had this idea to spin this stuff around. Uh, but I had to do it by hand and while I'm trying to control the focus. <laughs> so uh, here's what my final output is. is say hey, I'm going to be working on this as time goes on. But uh, as I say, I was really in a crunch for time, so I just had to do the best that I could. So uh, anyway, there's the turnarounds, and uh, see you next time. Thanks.